Kirby's Return to Dreamland Deluxe is a really good remake. It added a lot of fun new content to make it fresh and different from the original game by a lot. And one of the brand new things that it offers is Magalore Epilogue, where we play as the one and only Egg. And oh boy, what a great idea that is. Back then when the game was announced, everybody was in disbelief, and all of the attention was specifically on Magalore Epilogue. It was the main highlight of Dreamland Deluxe, and after people played it, they weren't disappointed at all. After defeating Magalore in the original story mode, he gets transported into another dimension, and loses most of his magical abilities, and now he has to regain his powers and find a way out of there by collecting apple slices. Also, he looks like a homeless man. Just wanted to clarify that real quick. The game mechanics are really different from the main story mode. Magalore controls the same as before in Star Allies but with some small tweaks in the moveset and it feels very good to play as him especially with the amount of moves he has. And we can finally take a break from normal Kirby abilities and play as a unique character with unique controls. In the other games such as Triple Deluxe and Planet Robobot, it was cool to play as Kirby's friends, but it wasn't interesting a lot since they were quite similar to normal Kirby abilities and they didn't add anything to the main story or game mechanics. But Magalore Epilogue does the opposite. This mode has something called magic points and they're really important to the core gameplay. You can upgrade Magalore's powers by spending those magic points and it's kinda like an in-game currency. You can get them by collecting them in the stages or defeating enemies and getting combos and the more combos, the more magic points you get. Defeating enemies in Kirby games is usually really useless, unless they're in your way, or you just have fun killing every single creature no matter how cute they are. But in here, you are basically obligated to defeating as many as possible. This is a really good system in my opinion, and I really like it. It feels like a full separate game rather than just a simple extra mode. Also, every time you get an apple slice after defeating a boss, Magalore learns a whole new ability that wasn't available before, and it's a pretty good reward to make the player want to continue in the game and see more of what it has in store. Honestly, when I played this game, I kinda liked it more than anything the remake had. It's just really satisfying going through levels, defeating enemies on the way and feeling more powerful. Blasting off enemies like freaking Goku or dashing through them, throwing bombs or even summoning a damn black hole. There's so many moves that you can use and they're so fun when chaining them together to progress into stages and getting magic points. And yes, he's that enjoyable to control with. Now let's talk about the most important primary thing, which is the stages. The mode has a hub world divided into 5 total areas and each time you clear a stage you get access to more stages and areas. The stages are reused from the main story mode just like in previous games, but there's also different brand new stages exclusive to the mode. The backgrounds and colors aren't that visually appealing, and there's barely any visual differences between the levels, but they still fit the theme of a ruined and lost place the mode tries to aim for. Reminds me of the current state of my mental health. Don't worry, I'm good. They also have pretty good level design and each one provides enough fun challenges and something to be distinct in the gameplay experience from the others like ice balls chasing you, blocks disappearing, or even protecting a bulb with magic points. To be honest however, I kinda hate that the stages are very short because I expected and wanted more from the ideas and gimmicks they introduced in each one, but I also like what the developers did to make them a little better. Because the stages are not pretty long, the mode has a scoring system. Whenever you complete a stage, you earn a medal based on how well you did in it. Kind of like Kirby's Epic Yarn and Rainbow Curse. Does anyone remember those games? The reason why I love this so much and think it's a great idea is because it adds replayability to it, making you want to play the stages again for a better score. No collectibles is kind of a downside in my opinion however. Exploring the levels and doing puzzles to get them is my favorite thing about Kirby games. I think they could have made the stages take a little longer to complete, so them not being in this mode made me a little bit disappointed. There's also some additional little challenge stages. They require a specific ability upgraded to a certain level and they're called ordal doors they are hidden in the hub world most of the time which is smart to make you explore the areas to find them and honestly they're designed pretty well and show what you can do with the new upgraded abilities and unlike the normal stages ordal doors don't have a rank system even though there are actual magic points to collect for some reason it would have been good to actually have it here because some magic points are a bit tough and do require a little bit of skill to get them and made the 100% completion a bit more challenging and fun. 
but as long as it doesn't hurt the gameplay experience, I'm okay with it. There's also an extra stage after beating the game which I really like. The stage is a compilation of every another dimension section from the main story mode, and even though they're the same, it was still pretty cool and one final long stage that can take some tries to beat. Okay, now the bosses. The bosses are okay. They aren't actually new, they are just elemental forms of the bosses from the main story mode or some new version of them, which is a bit lame, not gonna lie. Their attacks are the same, but this time way tougher to dodge it are chaotic and can be a little hard to land a hit on them sometimes. For example, that damn watcher monkey moves and teleports too much like damn bro. Chill. It's actually really good that they are a bit difficult this time and I'm glad they did this because it balances the difficulty considering the many moves Maglor has and how overpowered this little egg can be. And speaking of moves, the abilities Maglor has are a factor too in their enjoyability. It's just really fun using different attacks and beating the hell out of them. Getting a gold or platinum medal is pretty challenging too. And overall, I think the difficulty is pretty decent, so... Yeah. And how can we not talk about the banger OCT? It's really good for just an extra mode of the game. But of course, this is a Kirby game we're talking about. And this is Magalore we're talking about. Like, of course, he needs to get songs that are just too good to exist because... Why not? The music fits the atmosphere of the game very well by combining Planet Robobot's mechanical and 8-bit kind of music as well as Kirby's Return to Dreamland natural and orchestra themes. Like there's no words that can describe how great it is. With the song Onward to a Pain My Heart Shows Well being one of my favorite Kirby songs of all time, it establishes the tone of the whole adventure and story of Magalore epilogue from start to finish and I just love it. After Magalor collects all the apple slices, a big doomer powered up by the shards of the Master Crown appears and tries to steal that big juicy sparkly apple. And after defeating him, the Master Crown takes possession of the apple you were trying to reassemble and boom. Giant Tree Boss. This whole fight is so climactic to be honest. You get attacked almost every second left and right with no sign of stopping. And you can feel that you're against a really evil entity that doesn't feel any remorse. I still remember when everyone first saw him and were like, oh my god, it's biblically accurate wispy woods. Sometimes the fandom never fails to make me laugh. After that, Magalore literally grabs a random sword, turns it big, and does an awesome anime climactic badass final finishing move with metal music in the background. Like a dude. No character has ever been just cool in a Kirby game, man. And then a portal opens up and Magalar has finally escaped his own hell. This final boss fight distincts itself from any other final boss for me, because unlike most other Kirby final bosses where Kirby meets them for the first time and never had any interaction with them before, Magalar has personal problems with the Master Count and has to destroy it because of what it has done to him. And the plot and build up for this moment is really fitting for a redemption arc in my opinion. He learned from his mistakes by getting a taste of his own medicine and got rid of the thing that caused all of this. He even makes a whole theme park for Kirby and the others as an apology to compensate for what he has done to them in the past. And that's really cool for developing a character like him. And no, I'm not gonna talk about his microtransactions. Anyway, Mangalore Epilogue was a really cool thing to have in my opinion, not only in terms of gameplay, but also in terms of the plot and lore. A lot of people, including me, wish it was a full separate game instead of just an extra mode of the remake, but I'm satisfied with what we have here. The positives outweighs the negatives and there's barely anything to criticize in here. I hope that HAL makes more modes like this one, especially when remaking games such as Triple Deluxe. Now like and subscribe or else I'm gonna tell Magalor to sell your whole family in his shop. Oh.